Knicks and Mavs at MSG, the return of the Snake Porzingis and Luka Doncic and company. Knicks just didn't have it, man. RJ, Julius, ice cold tonight. And uh, just set a bad tone overall. But second quarter, second unit came alive. Second unit came alive. Derrick Rose, IQ, Taj Gibson. And my man Obi was unlocked. Knicks would take an 11-point lead in that second quarter. But the starters would give it all right back. Back into the second half. Just couldn't get it together, man. Like I said, Julius, RJ, and Derrick Rose combined 4 for 41 on the night. No ball movement. Shots just weren't falling. And after that, the defense just uh, let go of the rope. But they were still the three-point lead for most of that fourth, man. But they just could not, could not climb back into this. And they would ultimately fall to the Mavericks. 99 to 86. Knicks put up a putrid 86 points. And that's all we have. Knicks Post Game Live, number one show for the fans by the fans. CP, Ashley Moss, CK2K. Number one show for the fans by the fans, presented by Manscaped. Man, where is the offense, people? Where is the offense? When, you, when you're two-headed monster, when you're Batman and Robin just don't have it cooking, it, it's a tough game to win. And couple that with Derrick Rose, a guy that we also needed to, to perform well off the bench. We know that. D didn't have it going. We just didn't have any offense. There was no rhythm. It was all ISO. It was one-on-ones. Guys weren't confident in their shots. You saw RJ wasn't confident in his shots. Scared to go in on Porzingis. Julius didn't have it going from beginning to end. Thought he should have been passing it more. Even though he finished with 11 assists. Ugly night. Just, a, just an absolute ugly night. Knicks fall to 24 and 25 in the campaign. CK, give me some thoughts, man. It started off good. Things looked positive to begin with. And then it just didn't. That's the only positive thoughts I got. Yeah. You know, it, a game that... Everybody was excited for going into it. There was a lot of, you know, back and forth talking about our starting point guard and stuff like that. But, you know, it started off looking good. You know, the bench unit came in doing what they normally do, playing great basketball. And we were playing fast. Obi Toppin was looking good. But then rotations just started to look a little shaky in the end of that second quarter. And we just never were able to recover from the rest of that game. Uh, we'll talk about the specifics with stats and whatnot. But three-game losing streak. Three You're officially game losing three without streak, Mike man. Woodson. Three game losing streak, a game we absolutely could have won. Dallas wasn't too sharp either. Let's be real. No. Dallas was not sharp. They were ripe for the taking. Knicks were all over them. That second unit was all over them in this game. They were not sharp. And and we let them settle in. Let them settle in. Ash, talk to me. How are you feeling? I um I'm not even gonna address the first half because mm. in basketball it's not how you start it's how you finish so I don't really care what happened in the first half all I know is that we mm. lost and we lost on our own court we lost in our own home and here's my issue one it's who we lost to like do you have no pride where's your sense of pride you let the Mavs come into the garden they let you let the get Snake revenge Porzingis come into the garden they and let you let revenge. them beat you. Where's your sense of pride? If you were going to win any game this season, it should have been this one. Yeah. You don't let the Mavericks. You have their draft pick. You have their pick, and you let them come in in your home, and you make, make a fool of you. In the second half, you weren't contesting shots. You were giving them every open space possible in the garden to go ahead and get comfortable, get their shots mm -hmm. up. You weren't forcing turnovers. Defense was Swiss cheese. Tibbs rotations were atrocious. R.J. Barrett was missing. Yes, my nine god was nowhere to be found. The general no himself, Julius Randle, was MIA. We couldn't buy a shot. You couldn't hit the side of a bus. Everybody looked terrible today. Yeah. Everybody is everybody is responsible for this loss. Everybody is up for, you know, um, a roasting session tonight because nobody did their job. Nobody did their job when it counted. Nobody did their job for entirety of the four quarters, which is what a basketball game is. It's a game of runs and it's a game of yeah. possessions. I don't care who did what in the first quarter and how it looked and how you were only down by three at the half. That doesn't matter because when you look at the wins and losses column, there's only one team going home with a win and it's not the New York Knicks. You it's guys should match. be ashamed of yourself. Absolutely match, ashamed. Man. Ugly game. Absolutely brutal game. You know, Burks had it going. 
Bur- Burks had it going, 20 points, 6 of 11 from the field. Uh, I just, I didn't, I didn't like the energy to start the game, man. I just did not like the energy to start the game. The ball movement was not crisp at all. And Tibbs, Tibbs, give credit. Yes, there was some lack of adjustments there. You wanted to see him go with the bench a little bit early in the second half, especially. But you had, you had Burks and IQ close the first half. You had uh, Rose and Burks close in the second half. There was no Peyton. Peyton got his 14 minutes. He did his typical Peyton, got you one assist, attacking the basket. Tibbs was looking for a point guard option. Rose had the ankle injury. He came back. I'm not sure if he was still bothered by that because there were some stretches in that second half where he quickly slow. was dominating the ball a little bit. And, mm-hmm. you know, Brunson was working him. And I was like, we need yep. I, we need Rose to take control of this game uh, with this unit. Quickly mm-hmm. just doesn't have it as the floor general right now. But it's kind of playing off ball a lot, especially in the fourth quarter, um, CK. I don't know what happened there, but all, you know, all in all, we just did not have a capable playmaker. Despite Randall's 11 dimes, we just really, really did not have an effective playmaker on the floor all game. All of our questionable players played questionable tonight. All yeah. of them. RJ Barrett looked questionable. Julius Randle been looking questionable for the last few games. I know people want to blame the Afro because he not braided up. <laughs> Whatever the case may be, he looked questionable tonight. And yeah, Derrick Rose got beat one too many times today, and he didn't look like the Derrick Rose that has been helping us play really well since the trade. All the guys that were coming back obviously are not playing 100, and Tom Thibodeau is still running them like they're you know like no big deal, which is to be expected. But uh, look, man, the adjustments, the lack of adjustments. I, I get you. You're right. The whole Elver Payne thing. But at the same time, we, we with the same thing we talked about in the Timberwolves game. Yeah. We waited until about the five minute Too mark late. in the third quarter Too when late. we were already drowning underwater to make a, an adjustment as we were just continuing to get beat down yeah. over and over and over again in that third quarter. I don't know, man. And then even then, Ali Burks, he still had a hard time putting him in yeah, after that timeout. He, he had to wait until another possession Way late. was brought in. So I... I don't, I don't understand. There's a lot of things. But I, I'm with Ashley, man. There's nobody here safe tonight. Nobody. I don't care who your favorite yeah. Nick is. I don't care who. Like, everybody's yeah. up for blame. You can even blame Mitchell Robinson. He didn't even play. Everybody's <laughs> up for blame tonight. Every Everybody is up for blame tonight. You know who's not up for blame tonight? I'm going to show you right now. Obi. Obi. Right. That's fact. My boy <laughs> Obi came to play tonight, folks. Came off the bench, gave us a spark. They told me he couldn't put the ball on the floor, Ash, but man was taking it to the rack. Got his hand once, got the putback slam over Porzingis. Obi came to play, man. Obi came to play. I was, I was happy. That was the one silver lining of this game, even though he didn't get much minutes in the second half. Obi came to play tonight. He did, but unfortunately, it doesn't make a difference in the win or loss column. It's still a loss, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I mean, Obi had signs of life tonight, which I was happy to see. Like I said, I was like a proud mom. Like, yeah, that's my baby. Go, Obi. And it was nice to see, you know, when you play at a quicker speed, it seems to better fit what Obi is built for. I think he doesn't do well, at least right now as a rookie. He doesn't do well when the game slows down. And that's not uncommon. A lot of rookies, the game, you know, it, it slows down for them and they're able to kind of get into a groove of things as they have more experience in the league. Usually you don't see that until like their third, fourth season. Um, it's, you know, it's not uncommon. So I think right now playing at a faster speed just suits Obi. Yep. But unfortunately, you know, that is overshadowed by the fact that you let the Dallas freaking Mavericks come into the garden with Chris Sops Porzingis. OK, yeah. and you let them take a win from you. And that overshadows Obi's signs of life, unfortunately. Man. And, and you know what? And Chris Stops, he had a slow start to this game, too. He, listen, the game was there for them. The game was there for them. There was a three. They, they were losing by three for a good chunk of that fourth quarter. And it felt like 20 because every possession was just a drag. Every possession, they just had to work twice as hard to get everything going. And, you know, listen, the Mavs have a superstar on one end of the court. We don't. So when Lucas starts getting pa- getting cracking in the fourth quarter, there's nothing you could do. You know, he hit his lucky shot. And you knew that top of the three key, that, that top of the key three-pointer, you knew that was going in. That one banked in. He got lucky there. Brunson killed us the whole game. Killed Brunson us. had a strong game. Strong game on both ends. I thought he bothered D. Rose on the defensive end. And but- I thought offensively he was, he was working us, man. Tim, Timmy as well. Timmy's you know work. what, though? That's superstar excuse. And yes, you know, Luca is a superstar in this league. He's going to yeah. be a superstar in this league, as he, uh, you know, for seasons to come. But that excuse, you know, I'm not taking that excuse because I've seen this Knicks team go toe to toe with the Nets. I've seen right. them go toe to toe 
with the Bucks. I've seen them go toe to toe with the 76ers. I've seen them go toe to toe with teams that are a lot more solid than the Dallas yeah. Mavericks. Essentially, you're out there playing Luca because Porzingis is useless, if you ask me. He, he he's useless. Yeah. You're essentially out there playing Luca, and you have enough talent on the Knicks. Okay, you have a freaking all star. You have a rising star in in RJ Barrett on the floor. That game should not have looked the way it did because even with Luca playing well, even with Luca, you know, being the superstar that he is, the Knicks yeah. were in that game and they were in they were it in for it. the first half. They were even in it midway through the third quarter. They lost that game themselves. They took their foot off yeah. the gas. They forgot it was a four quarter game and not a first half game. That this loss is on them. I'm not going to give the Mavericks credit. The difference, for being no, but you have to though. The, but you coach the difference they is it. they Luka took it. it. Yeah. They did take the fourth quarter. Yeah. Took it. And, 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 and when but, push comes to shove, having that superstar is the difference. When yeah. when when the team is overall not playing well, we've they, seen, we've seen it time we, and time again. With the Knicks are looking for answers in crunch time. Dallas can go to Luka Doncic and he could give you that miracle top of the three key that he gave you, that step back baseline be, jumper listen, to seal the game. That would be fine. You know what? And I would agree with you there. I do agree with you there in, in you know, halfway. But I've seen this team. We've all seen yeah. this team go toe-to-toe with teams that have a lot more Absolutely. superstars no, that no you question. speak of on the floor right. no, no question. than the Mavericks. No question. No question. So there's no Tonight excuse. just wasn't all night, man. They didn't if have you it. Can go, listen, if you can go toe-to-toe with the Nets, if you can go toe-to-toe with the 76ers, you don't let the Dallas Mavericks come into the garden and take one from you. I'm not listen, I'm not giving them that. When, you, when you're 24 and 25, Ash? I'm not you, giving them that. You, you, you can, I'm not giving them that. When you're 24 sorry, and 25, not. that's what happens. I'm not giving you, them that. That's that good. Thing. You ain't got to give it to them because they took it. They took it. It's that simple. They took it. Exactly. We let, but you know what? We let them take it because we've. I've seen this team go toe to toe with a lot tougher Listen. opponents than the Dallas Mavericks. We let them take this one from us, and we let them take it in our Listen. on our own court. And that in itself is embarrassing. And this team should be ashamed of themselves. That was atrocious. Three, what we saw. Three game losing streak. Three down. Offense three is down. averaging ninety four points in the last five, I believe. Ninety four points. Offense is struggling, man. Offense is struggling big time. I, I don't know what the answer is. I really don't. They don't either. Yeah. It looked like they don't. They, they're searching. Let's go to LB from the Bronx. LB, how you feeling, man? CP, what's going on, man? How you feeling? Again, I think I feel, I'm feeling like Tibbs. I'm feeling like this is the third game in a row that Tibbs cost us, bro. It's like, I don't... I don't know what he's doing. Like you clearly seen in the second quarter, the second unit was cooking. It was cooking. It got us what a good thirteen point lead. Yeah. They got us like a thirteen point lead. Yeah. And they waived one mistake. They gave up a three. They got it down to ten. And immediately he panics, takes them out, put the bench in. The bench I mean the starters immediately come in and give up the whole lead. Immediately. Next thing you know, we go into the halftime down by three and I'm sitting here just thinking like we were just up by ten. Let the bench play. They're playing well. Let them. That's. Yeah. that's I feel like that's yeah. his downfall. Yep. Like I, I watch. I watch Pop, one of the best coaches ever. I see him. Tim Duncan. All of them. Yep, he'll scrap well. the whole starting he five. All of them. <laughs> Facts. You take all of them out. That's yep. the. That's the difference between a great coach and a good coach. Tibbs. He's too stuck on what he's stuck on, and I, I just. It's like he's he's yeah. he's helping us, but he's killing us at the same time. And imagine my last thing I want to say. Imagine. They've, everybody's been killing Obi. He's not basketball ready. He's not. Imagine from the beginning of the season, if Tibbs would have instilled confidence in him, let him play 15, 20 minutes a game. Don't worry about it, Obi. You're going to make mistakes. Could you imagine where, what he would be right now? Do you see? Did you see the little glimpse of what he can be tonight? Yeah. So imagine if he'd been getting some decent minutes for 15, 20 minutes a game the whole season. What would he be right now? Yeah, you know but I mean, it's, 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 it's hard to really call it that way, though. It's hard to really call it that way because in those minutes that he's played outside of this game, he hasn't been great, bro. So you can't really blame the coach for going back to his A1 guy to save a game and to try to get a win. You see how bad the offense is. Tonight, he, t- it wasn't about the minutes for Obi tonight. He just played more confident. We've been asking him to put the ball on the floor, get aggressive, draw some fouls, and he did that. Right, we we were told that we were told he, he needed a point guard. He needed a point guard. He, he can't he can't put the ball on the floor. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm I'm I was saying the whole time if if this is the college basketball player of the year, you want to tell me he can't put the ball on the floor and, and get aggressive and try to draw a foul, then something is wrong. Mm-hmm. 
And he got it done tonight, even in the limited minutes. I do, though, agree with him. And this is something that I've been critical. I think many people have been critical about Tibbs' stubbornness in the sense that he just tries to force his rotation, his game plan down your throat every single game. And I know everybody here are Heat haters, but one thing that I can appreciate about the Miami Heat is the first thing, team that comes to mind just because I've been up close and personal with them over two years is that Coach Spo is great at changing his game plan when he has to. You've even seen it in games that we've played them. He will go in there with a particular game plan in mind. And as the game progresses and as it moves, because again, basketball is a game of runs and possessions. And sometimes the runs don't fit your game plan. Sometimes the possessions don't fit your game plan. So any good coach looks at that and says, you know what? Throwing that out, this doesn't work. These are the adjustments that we are going to make. But Tibbs looks at it and sees what's happening on the court unfold in front of his eyes and still would rather take the A game plan that was going to work if the game didn't look the way it looks now and still tries to use it. There's no correlation between what's happening on the court and what adjustments he makes. It's almost like he could, it's almost like the game's not happening in real time for him. It's almost like he's watching film and that's what he's using to develop his plays. And he could give a Mm. damn about what's happening in real time. And I just don't understand the logic. It doesn't make any sense to me. TK weigh in, bro. Well, I was going to touch on the um, the Obi comment. I just feel like I, I feel like we've been playing Obi around that 15 minutes, maybe not the 20 minutes, but we've been playing 15 minutes. And I'm with you that, you know, some games he added, some games he didn't. But at the same time, what we don't we're not talking about is we were playing faster this game, at least in the positions yeah. that he was in. And that has been Obi's game. And that has been where Obi's able to shine. And we saw Obi be able to put the, the ball on the floor. So I. I think both of you guys are right. Um, I think it's a bit of both. I still do believe Obi needs that point guard, but I think the biggest thing is we need to play fast and we capitalize on that because defense turned into our offense in that uh, second quarter where we saw Obi just go off because the majority of those plays, we were running downhill. And then when he did get the ball, he was coming off and going downhill, um, getting that and one. You know, the um, the tip back dunk was, you know, all of them were going downhill. And that's just Obi's bread and butter. So when we're playing the half court, and what did the callers say on, on Wednesday? We're playing that half court, walking up the ball offense. Oh, Obi's trying to figure that out as, yeah. as his time in the NBA goes. So I just feel like this was just more catered to him in that spurt, yeah. which is why he played really well in those four minutes. And I would I would have went back to him tonight. Especially when Easily. Julius didn't have a coach. That's what I'm saying. No, people in the chat were saying that. I was saying that Tibbs went to Julius tonight because Obi didn't have a go. Nah, I'm talking about previous nights. Obi earned yeah. his minutes tonight. I thought he should have played more in the second half.